uh, we could go ahead and uh, Mary Parks is first on the list. Is Mr. Parks available? Just if you could just identify yourself for the record. And Madam Chairman, Madam Chairman for the committee, my name is Perry Parks. I'm a chief warrant officer, retired from the Army. I'm comfortably retired, so what am I doing here sticking my neck out in this issue? I chose to wear this uniform because I spent 30 years in it. And I'm speaking for many, many, many veterans. These veterans were told about two weeks ago that in states that have passed this legislation, they will no longer stop giving the other medications to the veterans. Now that's the VA, only if I live in a state where it's legal. I want to give you my personal example of what it did for me, and I have known about it for a long time. And you're right, uh, Representative Wilkins, about 16% of the people that try anything have problems with it. I've had 45 years of experience in my family, and my family is very happily settled. But let me just illustrate to you what happened to them. On National Guard duty during one of the floods in 1999, I had degenerative disc disease. Always dealt with it, no problem. But I slipped and failed. So the National Guard said, look, we gotta fix this. So they sent me to Scotland Memorial Hospital pain clinic. I had epidural steroids, I had mild cardio branch blocks, I was taking biopsy, cell arrested, and really broke the heat. I was taking 50 milligrams of biopsy. They referred me to the Duke pain clinic, Dr. Tom Buckeye. For two years, I was here at Duke in 2000 and 2001. Again, the needles in my back must cut these nerves. I suffered level three, level four, and level five pain all the time. When I finally retired from the National Guard, where I spent the last five years as a safety manager here at the Raleigh Military Complex, and also served on task force with the Army and the Air Force in vehicle safety and drugs for 30 years. But when I got out of the military and was no longer subject to random testing, I again returned to using marijuana. Hadn't done it during college, and Toro and all. But when I started using it, the funny thing that happened was, I realized my pain doesn't exist anymore. I can do anything I want to. I had an MRI three months ago. My doctor says, I'm not sure your, your, your treatment is appropriate. So I went to the pain clinic in Pinehurst. And I went in and they tested me and they said, what drugs do you take? I said, I take these drugs and I smoke marijuana. I'm 66 years old. I should be able to do that. She said, well, if you, if you take marijuana, I can't let you have any other drugs. I said, what are you talking about? You tested positive for marijuana. I said, well, I told you I was taking it. She said, well, I'm not familiar with this drug. And so I decided at that time that I had to make myself available to try to make people understand what the facts are. I'm an officer retired in the army. My word is my bond. I no longer suffer from any pain. They don't understand if the cannabinoids mask the pain, if they eliminate the pain, if they prepare you to deal with the pain better. I don't care. I don't pay for box anymore. I don't pay for cell breaks. I don't go to pain clinics. This is for the last six to eight years. I came to rest in Melody Good and I said, look, this is something that deserves my reputation. I served on the state employees uh, as, a, as a member of the Board of Governors for six years. Everywhere I've gone, I've worked very hard to try and do my best to be a good citizen. And now I find myself a criminal in this state. If I move to California, Oregon, Washington, Alaska, I'm no longer a criminal. I'm, I don't mean to interrupt you, but we do have a, an adjournment time coming up, okay. and uh, we might be able to get one more speaker I'll, I'll in. I'll cut myself short. I would like to say one quick thing. I prayed about this. I went to my minister. I went to Representative Goodwin and Senator Cassell's office, and we had a legislative lobbyist come in. I knew from working for one of the working as his pilot that if I could get to the Speaker of the House, that would help. After the inauguration, my wife and I 1.8 million people found ourselves standing on the platform beside the speaker of his wife. And I had him hostage for 40 minutes on this one. Going to Arlington. And I decided to break the news to him. And I said, he is a very honorable man. And I know that. And I said, all I ask, sir, is you listen to me. Look at the facts and make your judgment based on facts and not what you thought. Well, I came back and my preacher said, get off of that. You're doing it wrong. I went to do your body. Your wife, family. I said, okay. So I'm going to drop it. Okay. I get a call from Congressman Kisses. Can you leave me in Camp Virginia to meet the President? Okay, sir. Okay, the President. Would you please? 
He supports it. I ran into Super Hackney again. Same issue. I was dressed like this. And I appreciate your time. I know it's for time. The next, uh, next speaker on the list here is Ms. Janet Osborne. Is she, uh, okay, yes ma'am. I'll be very brief. Hi. I appreciate you. Please identify yourself. I'm oh, sorry. Excuse me. My name is Janet Osborne. Um, I'm a medical outreach coordinator for the North Carolina Cannabis Patients Network. Um, I've been a nurse for 14 years, and I've worked with the best and the brightest in medicine and research and the occasional neurosurgeon, the spinal end. Um, we know as much as that pain is subjective. We persist to understand it, we try to ease the suffering, we observe, we listen, we give medication, we remind you to breathe, we make you laugh. When doctors shake their heads and say, we've done everything we can, we will hold your hand and stay at your bedside and pray with you until the worst is past. After eight surgeries, including three failed spinal fusions on my C-spine, my muscles and nerves have been studied, injected, medicated, blocked, released, impaled, and burned. And I have more hardware in my neck than the crass when I don't see yours, and I'd be glad to show you the scars if you want to see them. But years of heavy narcotics, antidepressants, anti-seizure meds all are addictive. Um, I was told that my last hope for relief was not a viable, viable option, so at the age of 38, I heard the words, we've done everything we can. So discussing medical marijuana with my doctor, the good Dr. Buckeye as well, he said if I was dying or had cancer, it would be different. And I asked, if I only have months to live, it would be okay to use medical marijuana. But 40 more years of constant pain, it's not okay. And he shook his head and said, yeah. And I actually heard myself say, I wish I did have cancer. I actually asked for cancer, because at least there's an end. Um, as a nurse, I said- Ma'am, I'm sorry, but by rule, we have to adjourn at a quarter before the hour session is at one o'clock. Please uh, find a place to stop immediately. Okay. okay, absolutely. Just to let you know, we are the same people. Uh, look around you. Policemen, firemen, nurses. We already know that this is medicine. We've done the research. We know the facts. We know that there is less of a chance of addiction than caffeine. And the American Nurse Association supports this. All I'm asking is that you give us some dignity and the right to actually give ourselves some relief. I'm standing here before you looking the way I do because of medical marijuana. It has restored my life. Thank you. Thank you. Reverend Jones, any closing comment? No, I appreciate you committee considering. I will be speaking to each committee member to ask them to consider voting on this legislation in a favorable way as uh, after next week as possible. And or considering having the voters to decide in a referendum. And thank you very much. Thank you, Reverend Jones, and thank you for meeting. Meeting is adjourned.